Next up is a new version of a tasty butter. What's up, Sharks? I'm Allie. I'm Eric. I'm Ari. And, and we're, we're Oat House. House. Woo we're from the beautiful city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we're here seeking $375,000 in exchange for 5% of our business, Oat House. Sharks, are you sick of dry, bland, boring granola that just tastes okay? Seriously though, Sharks, when was the last time you looked in your pantry and saw the same old spreads that had been there since 1989? Can you say, boring? Sharks, that's where we come in. Say hello to granola butter, the next generation of granola. Booyah, baby! What's granola butter, you ask? It's the world's first oat-based spread, made with oats. Flax. Olive oil. Maple syrup. Spices. And, and it'll, it'll blow, blow your mind. mind. Boom! World class, baby! Let's go! Our granola butter has the texture of a nut butter, the tantalizing taste of granola, and best of all, it's gluten-free. It's vegan. And, and it's nut-free! That means it's perfect for all the vegans, the celiacs, folks with allergies, kids in nut-free schools. Everybody's welcome in the Oat House. Come on! Eat it on yogurt. On toast. In a smoothie. <laughs> on a spoon. <laughs> this is the biggest innovation the nut butter category has seen in years. And we're on a rocket ship going straight for the moon, baby. So, Sharks, who's ready to stir up a deal? One oat at a time. If this nut thing doesn't work out, you're going to be dancers. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you. can Thank we you. open up and try? We have yeah. So, Sharks, in front of you have our four core flavors. You have our original with cinnamon and cardamom. You have our vanilla, which tastes like a sugar cookie. You have our chocolate, which reminds me of brownie batter and our blueberry, which is just like my grandma's blueberry crumble. Um, at the Oat House, we want to bring the play and fun back into eating. And as the chef, my only rule is that there's no wrong way to eat granola butter. First of all, when you open it, the smell is fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. I really like the... Yeah. It's just got a great, like, kind of toasted, caramelized mm. granola smell. Yeah. And it tastes like a peanut butter yeah. to me. Exactly. Is it supposed to? Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to have that texture of the nut butter, and you kind of use it the same way. Mm. Um, but it has that taste of granola. It's almost soup-like. I mean, is that yeah. going to be a pushback from consumers? Yeah, so it's slightly more spreadable and drizzly than a uh, normal peanut butter. Is that butter. intentional, or is but it because your lot. ingredients? Yeah, it's intentional. Um, I mean, most people like it that way so they can drizzle it on yogurt bowls and smoothies and acai bowls and stuff like that. Guys, what is your relationship? So Eric and I are dating. We've been yeah. dating for about eight years. So oh. he's wiped up at this point. What are you uh, waiting for, Eric? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. And then Ari and Eric are childhood friends. How did you come up with this idea? Granola butter actually came out of my eating disorder recovery. Um, so I struggled with food in my body for over a decade, um, particularly anorexia, binge eating, and orthorexia, my which gosh. is sort of like eating healthy taken to the extreme. So it's an obsession with eating perfectly clean all the time. So one day, you know, I just hit my rock bottom and decided to reach out for help. Um, found an incredible therapist who, you know, really set me up on this journey of self-love and food freedom. And I did what any millennial <laughs> would do in my situation, which was I started an Instagram account to document my entire journey. I bet you helped a lot of people, Allie. Yeah, thank you. I'm excited to share my story because I felt so alone when I was going through it. Um, and so if one person watching, you know, hopefully I can feel, help them feel less alone and, you Now, know. Allie, was then, this granola butter. Yeah. Something you said, it came out of that journey. Definitely, yeah. So where Explain. the granola butter comes in is, you know, part of my recovery journey was adding my fear foods back into my diet. So for me, that was peanut butter and almond butter um, because they're, you know, a little more calorically dense. And so I avoided them for a really long time. And as I started to add them back in, you know, my gut couldn't handle all of the nuts, unfortunately. So I started to explore some of the nut-free options. But for me personally, they just didn't resonate with me that much. And so I was in my tiny SF kitchen with just like a blender, some granola, and I had this epiphany to do an oat-based spread. And I saw what, you know, oat milk had done and just exploded. And I was so shocked that no one had done an oat-based spread. So that's where the idea was born. And then we brought Ari in and he put the chef's kiss final touches <laughs> on it. Can you break down the numbers for me? So lifetime sales of the business, we've done $2.7 million. Cash money. <laughs> um, and Over what period of time? Uh, so we launched in March of 2018. The first year we did about $156,000 in sales. The next year we did 435. Last year we did $1.2 million. Wow. Um, and that was with a marketing spend of less than 5% of our gross revenue. Good for wow. you, that's a lot. Uh, thank that's you. Great. And we're looking to close this year out at about $2.5 million. And how much money have you guys raised? So we actually bootstrapped the business for the first two years. We put about 100K of our own money and raised 600K on a convertible note. What valuation? Uh, so we raised that at partially on a $5 million cap, 
and partially on a $6 million cap. The first part of that was our true friends and family. And the second piece of that was from founders who've had successful exits in the space. Tara Bosch, who's the founder of Smart Suites, and she was yeah. a solo founder and ended up selling her business for over $300 million in just four years. We have Jake Casson, who bootstrapped his way to one of the most successful e-commerce businesses, Movement Watches, and they also had an exit for over $300 million. So what is the cost structure? What is your cost you to make a jar? Yeah, so it costs us on average $325 to manufacture a jar. We sell a jar for between $9 and $12.95 on our site. Ooh. To distributors, we sell for a little under $5.50. And then that lands on shelves between $8.99 and $11.99. So when you walk into a store, what is it about it, as opposed to all the competitors that are out there, that's gonna make it stand out and make people wanna sample it? Why people go to our product is really different based on who the consumer is. Yeah. So if they have a nut allergy or they're- Oh no, I get that, but there's a lot of them now. And just being allergen-free and gluten-free, mm -hmm. that's not enough of a differentiation. And I just don't see that one thing that makes it stand out. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have had great success so far. I'm sure you'll continue, but for those reasons, I'm out. Okay, thanks, Mark. You're welcome. Um, I love the team. I love the branding of it. I think it's a great name. But I have to say, I don't see what I could do for your business. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I'm out. Thank you. Yeah. Every shark does food deals. I'm no different. This category is very competitive, mm -hmm. but I'm still stuck on the consistency. I don't like it. Okay. You know, I, I gotta love a product because my strategy is always, I have your back. I'm sorry, guys. I'm out. Okay. I think that it is um, great tasting. Okay. I think your packaging is great. I like the granola butter. Mm -hmm. It's intuitive. It's instantaneous. I knew just what it was before you explained what it was. Yeah. And you've done a really great job with flavor profiles. I just don't see it as a business for me. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so you much. You know, I, I like you guys. I like your product a lot. There was one thing that when you were presenting, I couldn't get out of my system. And it was when you started mentioning your investors, you said, this one had an exit for this, and this one had an exit for this, and we had an exit for this. And you know, when I started Kind, it never crossed my mind that there would be, I didn't even know what the terminology is, the exit. When you build something, you should build it because you love it, not for the exit. And I think there's a, a desire to surround yourself with founders that had exits. Mm. That is what my God is telling me. I, I will buy the product, I'll buy it for my kids, and I'll recommend it. I'm sorry, but I'm out. Okay, thank nice. you. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Thank Good you. Luck. Thank you guys. Congratulations. You know, honestly, it just adds fuel to the fire. You know, I want the sharks to really look back and realize, shoot, I missed a huge opportunity, and now, you know, Oat House is on the moon, and I'm down here on planet Earth. <laughs> Daniel, I, I'm so happy you said that. I always feel that way. If you focus on an exit, even crossing it's your mind. That word bothers me so much. Guys, guys, what are you next... talking about in the flavor? This stuff tastes like I disagree with Mr. Wonderful. I think, you think that that's the... okay? It's not oh, you show it that way. <laughs> <laughs>